everyone. Uh, my name is Pranav Patel. I should introduce me. Um, I'm going to talk about multi tenant role based identity and access management at West. Um, before I go into the topic, give you a brief overview of uh, who West is. Um, we are in the business of uh, communications. Uh, we provide lots of solutions that uh, deal with communications, whether it's uh, text messages, outbound calls, inbound calls. Um, and we are um, probably uh, you know, a two, two billion plus company, uh, headquartered in Omaha. Uh, there are lots of offices around the world. Uh, right now we are about more than 10,000 folks uh, as part of the company. The company itself is divided into uh, multiple segments, if you will. Uh, and I briefly go over, over them with you, just so that you get an idea of uh, when I talk to the solution, how it relates to it. Um, Unified Communication Services is one of our biggest conferencing uh, solutions out there. If you have heard of Intercall, that is what the uh, West uh, business unit is. Uh, safety services, uh, we do a lot of 911 infrastructure. So if you make a 911 call, chances are it is going on the West infrastructure cloud. Uh, interactive services, that's what uh, my division is. Uh, that's what I represent. And we do a lot of uh, notifications, IVRs, uh, speech application, automation, uh, those kind of solutions for our customers. And specialized agent services is, is a group where we uh, do revenue generation and healthcare advocacy. Okay? Uh, interactive services is uh, further divided into different verticals, uh, and those are based on what type of solutions we provide, uh, whether it's um, commercial utilities, education, and healthcare areas. So, uh, I want to talk about what kind of solutions index services provide. Uh, we try to connect with our solutions, our clients, to their consumers. Uh, we are that middleware, if you will, uh, where we host applications for our clients. Um, and it really is to provide that connected customer service or customer experience. Um, we do multiple channels. Uh, so it's, it's calls, as I mentioned, uh, text messages, uh, mobile, web, emails. And having these solutions across uh, multiple of these channels uh, for our clients, uh, what we need to really bring to the table is how to connect them all, how to make that experience for our customers uh, so unique um, that you know, they feel like the, the company knows them. So, The next slide, when it comes up, is going to show you uh, the challenges that we face and what the problem we are trying to uh, uh, really solve. Uh, you know, West has been in business for the last 30 years. And over time, obviously, as you can imagine, as the bigger enterprises, you, you develop, start developing solutions uh, that then gets very siloed and distributed, right? So everybody comes up with their own, own set of uh, ways of doing this using different technologies. And when it now tries to combine all these or, or provide a connected customer experience solutions, the challenge really becomes how to combine all that, right? Um, so our biggest challenge is how to uh, make all these distributed silos application into a unified way of, of presenting it. Um, what uh, the group I started with and providing a solution out there is to really start with the customer identity and, and tie it with the actual customer portal that we provide. Um, so that's really um, the focus that, that I want to talk about. Talking about identity, as I mentioned, a lot of our applications um, does their own identity management. So if you develop a web application, and a lot of my uh, reference here is, is related to web applications. Uh, each web applications we develop for our customers um, may end up having its own user identity, right? Um, so part of this effort is to centralize our identity management system. Um, and with that, uh, our, our biggest thing, as I mentioned earlier, is to know um, 
that I briefly talked to them, and as I said, the, you know, one point I want to make sure is, is the customer today is going to drive which channel they use to communicate with the company, right? It's no longer company dictating that, oh, you should call me to get your questions answered. It's the customer who chooses, say, I want to talk to you using my text message or through mobile phone or through web application. So a company has to provide solutions in all these areas, and it is expected by the customer that they know them on the, all these channels, right? So if they start a transaction on a phone and drop it in between, they should, and, and choose a mobile phone to complete the transaction, they expect that the company should know that, right? Um, so the, the, the biggest thing then is to really know the customer. And, and that's where I think we are trying to do is, is try to bring this identity to a centralized place so all uh, transactions, or at least uh, when it comes to identity, is, is stored in a, in a, in a centralized uh, place. It obviously, it provides ease of uh, account management, cost savings, um, and operational eff efficiencies, but uh, th the main thing is it, it is knowing the customer. So our, our requirements when building this um, was, was really uh, to provide a multi-tenant hierarchical uh, solution. Um, and I'll go into details of, of some of these as, as I go along. Um, but multi-tenancy is, is really, as I said, we develop solutions for our different customers, and we didn't want to have siloed applications. So our portal uh, should serve not just one, but, but should serve all our customers. So that's where the multi-tenancy comes in. Um, role based access by product. Uh, so depending on who the customers are, uh, they can have diff access to different web applications. Um, a user role play. This was a unique requirement where, uh, and it applies lots to the employees of the West, but they want to see how the customer experience would be if they logged in as that customer, right? Um, so you want to provide a solution that, that would kind of mimic uh, as that client's user while logging in. Um, a user store um, has to be a Postgres database, and we had uh, corporate policy requirements for passwords. Uh, that we need to maintain password history, uh, that a password has to be expired and changed often, um, and obviously provide a lot of SSO and federation to our, our, our clients as well. Um, Audit logging and user bulk import are some of the other requirements that we had to uh, satisfy. Um, we chose WSO2 Identity Server uh, for this purpose, and um, some of the reasons are, um, you know, many of these requirements that I mentioned earlier, uh, especially uh, supporting various protocols and stuff, is already supported out of the box, right? Um, not all, uh, but a lot of it was supported. So we had to do uh, some of the extensions on top of it. Uh, it allows us to do heterogeneous uh, and multiple user stores. Um, it, we already have uh, other WSO2 products in our stack. We do use ESB, we do use uh, API Manager, uh, application servers, and DSS. So the other advantage of using identity serve was that they integrate with those products very nicely, right? So you have this complete uh, ecosystem of that. Um, when we started this implementation, we were on version 5.0 of, of identity server, and, and since then have moved to 5.1. Um, obviously now we'll to go to 5.3 as we make progress. Um, here are some uh, system concepts I want to uh, get you guys familiarized with uh, of this system. Uh, as I mentioned, the tenant to us is typically a vest client, right? And it is represented in the system with a domain. So at vest.com or at foo.com, whatever that, that, that tenant is. And it gets represented within the system, um, identified as, as, a, as, a, as a domain. Um, and tenant can have subsystems, uh, subtenants. So if you look at identity server today, it has multi-tenancy in it. Uh, that is true. However, there is no relationship between these tenants, right? Uh, tenants are completely separate entities. What we wanted to do is really establish this parent-child relationship in this tenant, uh, so that if you think of a VAR uh, and managing different tenants under there or different companies uh, that you can manage, this relationship would help you to do that, right? Um, 
Uh, products are really a web application that we're going to represent into the system. Uh, products will have features of features and probably actions that they can happen on those. Um, this product and stuff goes really into the role-based access that we're going to provide. Uh, we came up with this concept of subscriptions where um, it's a relation between a tenant and a product, right? So while giving access to a, a particular client uh, on which products they're going to use, that relationship ties with subscriptions. Uh, roles, uh, those are very product specific. So each product will have roles and this really defines the permissions uh, that you, for each of the features they may have on it. And the users are part of the uh, uh, tenant. Uh, and they are the ones who are actually going to access the, the portal or the applications. So some of the tenant extensions as I, uh, we did were, as I mentioned, we, we introduced the relationship hierarchy um, between tenants, parent, child. Uh, this is an additional table, if you will, that was added on top of identity server to store this information. Uh, added attributes, these attributes uh, really are to tie the tenant that is defining the identity server with our client database, right? So there were many uh, parameters that we wanted uh, that to tie these two, two things together. So an attributes table was added to, to provide that. Uh, security questions. Um, identity server does have a, a, you know security questions that comes as part of it. Um, but we expanded that, that set, if you will. Um, three sets of five security questions each per tenant. Uh, and the subscription table to tie the uh, tenant and product relationship. Uh, the products and roles, as I mentioned earlier, products really are, are just a definition of what it is. Uh, it also has information around how that product is going to be integrated into the portal. Uh, so some sort of a, a metadata information along with uh, the features and sub-features that the product has. Uh, once you have that, you can define the permissions or the roles of, of for that product. And that's what, what the, the right-hand side is showing, really, is it, it's defining a role based on the, the features, sub-features, and actions that you have defined for the product. Um, users uh, are, are really, um, you know, based on, on the tenant that you created with a domain, uh, you create a user for that, for that uh, tenant. Uh, the usernames, we try to try to match it with the use, uh, email ID, though it is not required that you have that. It is really in that email format, though. Um, the second screen, the password information, that really is how that user is going to be validated. Um, we do provide a single sign-on and federation, uh, so you could have users that are already existing in Southern IDP in your company Active Directory, or if they don't exist it, and we really need to create the user in our, our local user store, you can do that as well. Um, so the system login credentials really means it's either an SSO or a federation to something else, and that the password is set by the user. What it does really, it kicks off a, a registration process, and I'll, I'll talk about that in the next screen. Uh, it kicks off a workflow for the user to register. Um, Point to note here, you know, we do a lot of managed applications. So um, we have not yet gone to where we allow users to self-register. It is still something that West or admin at West needs to invoke and, and get the user registered in the system. But the right-hand side screen really is, is what ties everything together. Uh, as far as the user roles are concerned, uh, this screen really ties you with the, who the tenant the, obviously, the tenant the user belongs to. Uh, then the product and the roles that you have access to, right? Um, and as I mentioned, one of the requirements we had was, was to mimic uh, if the user is coming in from as another tenant. And that the screen allows you to do that and says, okay, if you are coming in, in this tenant or as a user of this tenant, I want to have access to these products and for each of these products, I want these, these roles to be defined. Okay. So if you have done a uh, password set by the user, 
the workflow that gets kicked off is for this user registration. An email gets sent out to the user uh, with a link. Uh, the user clicks on the link, comes to the user registration page, uh, and we use uh, the, uh, the CAPTCHA um, uh, feature of, of the identity server. Uh, the user has to answer the CAPTCHA, use the, set the password, and ask, uh, answer three, three security questions from a set. All right. This really um, completes the user registration. We do have rules uh, for password policies, and one of the things we extended also is to have these password policies set by tenant. Uh, so each tenant could have different password policies. Uh, so if I have multiple customers uh, that require their passwords uh, to be of different formats or different uh, needs, then that can be done. Uh, apart from this, few other extensions we did, uh, as I mentioned, we started with 5.0 and then upgraded to 5.1. All the identity server APIs, if you're familiar with identity server, is not all, all REST. Uh, they are still SOAP-based APIs, right? So we had to write wrappers around it to make it REST. Um, we used OAuth proxy. Uh, our portal really is a single page application um, with JavaScript. So uh, to do logins using that, we, we had to do OAuth, OAuth 2. We did a lot of um, things around password expiration. So if the pa we have a policy of, let's say, a, you know, a password expires 90 days after 90 days. So we send out notifications uh, five days prior to the expiration and two days prior to the expiration if the user uh, telling the user that they need to change their passwords. Uh, we maintain a password history, and this was another extension we did where the last 12 passwords has to be maintained in this history table, and you cannot reuse them. Uh, locking the user accounts. Um, so we do allow the user lock a user account for 15 minutes if they three times they try it and it, it fails. Um, we do remove the user accounts if they don't uh, log in or change the password for 180 days. Um, since we are, as I mentioned, one of the things were we migrating from the old systems into the centralized, we needed a way to kind of start importing users, right, in a, in a bulk fashion. Uh, so we have a CSV format uh, that we can use uh, to import all these users into our, our, our new centralized system. Uh, audit logging and tracking is important for operation as far as what's going on, uh, as far as the users and data changes are concerned. A few other future things we'll, we'll like to accomplish as we go forward, um, customizable logging page um, per application or by tenant. Um, you know, many times, uh, as I said, you have federation or single sign-on, uh, and your, your login page, and we want to go really where you really take the username first. Based on the username for, and, and the domain, you determine what the next step is going to be. You can rather ask for the password, you can ask for some other information, and then authenticate it, right? Get into two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. Uh, user provisioning self-registration with an approval workflow. So even though we do a lot of managed applications, uh, we do want to have provide self-service to, the, to the, the, the clients and the users of the clients. Um, and they can register themselves, however we can, can do it through approval workflows. Uh, more and more products through SSO and federation. Um, a lot of the 5.3 features and tying into the DAS, right, uh, to the WSO2 product so you can monitor what's going on, make sense out of uh, the login attempts that are failing, or are they trying to do fraud by multi IPs, the same login to the same IP or the same range of IPs. Uh, so a lot of monitoring reporting needs to be added uh, to the system and analytics to it. Um, and then just keeping up with the WSO2 identity server releases. So that's all I had up. This gives you a glimpse of, of what we are trying to do with the identity server, uh, what your plans are going forward. So thank you.